Hey guys, so what would you do about a dented pipe on a two-stroke? So I've got this pipe for my CR250, just a stock pipe that I got with the bike, not the pipe I'll be using on the build. So it's got some pretty gnarly dents in it and I figured why not see what I can do with it. So there's a few different options here as far as fixing the dents. I could buy a kit that plugs off the ends of the pipe here and then you add compressed air and some heat around the dent and it'll, it'll pop out but from what I've read is it's pretty sketchy to do that. If you don't know what you're doing, you can blow apart the pipe, do some serious damage and hurt yourself. So that's the last thing I want to happen. And the next option is to send the pipe out to a pipe repair company. Now there's a few of them out there that are pretty good. The one I'll be using is called Pacific Crest Pipe Repair out of Oregon. Now this isn't a sponsored video, just me paying out of my own pocket for pipe repair. And uh, I'm excited to see what they can do with it. So while I'm at it, the pipe on the 125 has some dents as well. So I'm gonna pull that pipe off, get these things boxed up and sent out to Pacific Crest and see what kind of magic they can do on them. I think I found a box that'll work for shifting out these pipes. By the way, what you can do is head behind your local grocery store, such as Fred Meyer, or uh, go behind an electronic store like Best Buy and go dive in their dumpster. They should have plenty of boxes out of work for shipping out a pipe. And that's not how I got all this shit off my face, by the way. This is all from chemo treatment. Pretty painful. So I'm gonna see if these pipes will fit in here. It's about as perfect as it gets right there. Man, I scored with this box. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is put foam, a couple foam pieces underneath the pipe, kind of protect it during shipping. I'm gonna go ship these things out and I'll check back in with you guys in a few weeks. All right guys, got the pipes back and it took a little over a month for them to do them, which I thought was a little slow but they did a pretty decent job smoothing out these dents here. The 125 pipe still has a little bit of indentation, but I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. The 250 pipe was in a lot worse shape from the beginning, and they did a pretty good job with knocking out these dents. You can still there, see there's a little bit of creasing here, bunch of little dings on this part of the pipe, but for what it was before, it turned out pretty good. But for some reason, they decided to paint the pipes with like spray paint on the 125 pipe. There's some drools in the paint, which I'm not too happy about. I had this pipe raw steel from the beginning and I don't really know why they spray painted it. So now I have to strip this paint off and uh, recolor the welds. What I'm gonna do with these pipes is strip this paint off color the welds with a torch, and then see if I can burn off some of the carbon buildup inside the pipe as well. All right, what I'll be using to strip the paint off these pipes is the stuff called aircraft remover made by Rust-Oleum. So you can pick it up at pretty much any hardware store, any auto store, or I'll have it linked down below as well. So you just wipe it on the paint, wait about five minutes, it'll dissolve the paint, and then you can just scrub all that paint right off. It'll basically just fall right off at that point. And with this remover, you definitely want to wear a set of gloves and glasses. It's pretty nasty stuff. I've got my gloves on, got a pair of glasses, got the aircraft paint remover in a little metal can with a brush. Let's get stripping. After a couple minutes of the paint stripper sitting on the paint, it'll start to bubble up and you can basically just wipe it right off. You can see just using this brush, the paint just falls right off. This stuff works really good. So I've got these leftover worn out Scotch-Brite pads and I'll be using these to knock off all the paint on the pipes. And then once I'm done with those and the brush over here, I'm gonna toss them in this garbage can and bring that bag to the local recycling center and they've got a hazardous waste spot for all this stuff. 
So you definitely want to be responsible with how you get rid of the paint stripper and the leftover paint. So it looks like I've got the majority of the paint scraped off with the Scotch-Rite pads. It's all just kind of smeared around on the pipe now. So what I'm gonna do is take a wet rag, wipe the pipe down, and figure out which areas I need to touch up with the paint remover. All right, I've got every last bit of paint stripped off both of these pipes. And next up is gonna be burning all the carbon buildup out of the inside of the pipe. So I've got this oven over here that I use for powder coating and I've got it cranked up to 500 degrees right now. And by putting the pipe in there, it'll heat up all that carbon and I should be able to shake it out of the pipe or rattle the pipe or hit it with like a soft hammer and loosen it up. Let's see if this pipe will fit in here or not. Perfect, that should do it. And if you don't have an oven in your shop to use to burn out the carbon, actually what I would do is mount the pipe in a vise, that way you're off the table or workbench that you're working on, and heat up the header portion of the pipe with a torch until it's red hot. Then you can use something like a wire brush, scraper, something to get that carbon out of the header portion. Actually the majority of the carbon is gonna be in this part of the pipe anyways. So uh, scrape that out, and that should do a pretty good job of getting a lot of the carbon out. All right, let's take a look at this 250 pipe inside the oven. Ooh, getting a little smoky. You can see some of that carbon burning off inside of there. And with this stuff, you definitely wanna have some good airflow in the shop or just do it outside. This stuff can be pretty nasty. So I would say a good 20 or 30 minutes is good in the oven. So it's been a solid 30 minutes. I'm gonna pull this pipe out and work on it outside. Holy, there's a whole lot of steam or uh, smoke coming out of that thing. Let's see, how can I get this thing out of here? Got this little scotch bright pad once again. Ow, shit. All right, drag this thing outside and knock off some of this carbon. Now, if you've got a lot of smoke or carbon coming out of your pipe, it's probably a good idea to wear a respirator. This carbon buildup is not good for your lungs at all. So I've got a flat blade screwdriver and a wire brush to scrape the carbon out of the pipe and the hammer, a soft hammer, I'm just gonna tap on the pipe and that should help loosen up some of the carbon as well. So I was able to shake out a lot of carbon out of these pipes. For the 125 pipe, the majority of it burnt out in the oven, but for the 250 pipe, there's still a good amount of carbon left in there. I'm gonna show you the difference between a pipe that has no carbon in it and a pipe that has a lot of carbon still left in. So the 125 pipe is pretty clear. Listen to the sound as I hit it with the hammer. So it has like a ting to it, or like a more, uh, kind of distinct sound and the 250 pipe has a dent sound to it. It has like a dead sounding hit to it and that indicates there's still some carbon built up inside this pipe. So I'm gonna run it through the oven again and try to burn more of that off. One thing I didn't really talk about much is why it's necessary to remove the carbon out of the pipe. So as that carbon builds up inside the pipe, it increases in weight, reduces the diameter of the pipe, and just reduces the performance of the pipe. So pipes are designed a certain way, especially a two-stroke pipe with all these bends and curves and different diameters. And so that carbon buildup really affects how the pipe works. Now that I've got these pipes all cleaned up and the carbon removed, I'm gonna bust out the bench grinder and cleaning wheel and bring these pipes back to a raw color. And once again, whenever you're doing any sort of cleaning or grinding, you want to use a respirator. 
So this is the respirator I use. It is a 3M brand. I'll have it linked down below in the description box. After everything I've been through the last few months of my life, I'm definitely very mindful of the chemicals I'm exposed to, and I'd hate for any of you guys to have to go through the same thing. Now I've got a more coarse wheel on the bench grinder and I'm gonna see what it can do with some of these scratches on the pipe here. I was able to knock out some of these scratches but these pipes are pretty thin so definitely don't wanna take off too much material. Alrighty, I've got both pipes cleaned up with a cleaning wheel. The 250 pipe still has a lot of little dents and dings, some scrapes on this side, but overall it looks a lot better than it did before. So lately I've been using this eight inch cleaning wheel compared to the uh, six inch wheel, or instead of the six inch wheel that I was using before. And I've noticed the eight inch wheel works a little bit better because the larger diameter equals a higher surface speed. And then of course with it being a larger wheel too, it lasts a bit longer. So I've got these wheels available over on primeofx.com. I'll have them linked down below as well. It is time to do some heat coloring on these pipes. So there really isn't that much purpose to the heat coloring other than just for looks, which I think it looks freaking sweet. So I've got two different torches here with different size tips. I'm just gonna play around with the width of the coloring here. So I'm gonna do all the seams and the welds as well. So I'm gonna start with a torch that has a smaller chip on it here and try to get like a thinner band of color. I'm gonna start here at the bottom and then just heat it up until I see a little bit of color coming through and then move all the way along the seam. And to get a little bit tighter color here, I'm gonna hold the torch pretty close to the pipe. Just trying to keep a constant speed so that way that uh, coloring is consistent. So this first seam didn't turn out too great, a little inconsistent. So I think the propane torch, the blue one here, doesn't get it quite hot enough to be consistent whereas the map gas torch is a little bit hotter and I've had better luck with that in the past. So I'm gonna scotch bright this thing back down to raw steel and then try the map gas torch instead. Let's give this another shot. Now that's a little better, but not quite as clean as I would like but it's crazy how much the heat coloring adds to the look of a raw pipe. I love it. The pipes are all done. Let's go get them mounted up. All right, the 125 pipe looks freaking amazing on there. Now let's check out the 250 pipe. I'm just gonna mock up the stock pipe on here and compare it back to back with the DPR pipe I have. See which one I like better. So do you guys like this pipe better or this one? Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Personally, I don't think you can beat the look of this DPR pipe. So as I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, how do you keep a raw steel pipe from rusting? Well, what I do is I use Maxima MPPL to spray it on the pipe, kind of wipe it around with a towel, and I'll do this after every time I wash the bike. And it seems like once you use the MPPL a few times, it kind of soaks in 
and builds up a layer and prevents it from rusting down the road. And it even kind of adds like a glossy finish to the pipe too. And one more thing to keep in mind with a raw steel pipe is the front portion of the pipe is gonna get heat colored when you ride it, especially if you're riding hard in like sand or a wide open track. So you really honestly don't need to do that much heat coloring with a torch on the front portion. After a few rides, it'll look pretty cool. So to cap things off, if you have a dented two stroke pipe, it is worth sending it out, but keep in mind, there's still gonna be some creases, scrapes, and little dings in the pipe. But it can look a whole lot better as you saw with the 250 pipe and the 125 pipe as well. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. And if you'd like to support the channel, head over to primemx.com. Just drop these super comfortable long sleeves, so go pick one up for winter. And I've got some really cool things coming your way with this 250 build. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, keep it prime. Oh,